the previous segment, we argued that for most of history, Europe had very little importance, especially Western Europe. In the modern age, Europeans managed to conquer the whole world and change it, thanks partly to the fact that Europeans began to think in a scientific way before everybody else did. What exactly, though, is the connection between science and empire, between thinking scientifically and the establishment of the, of, uh, the European empires all over the world? Modern science obviously owes a huge debt, not only to the modern European empires, but also to ancient scientific traditions, such as those of classical Greece, China, India, and the Islamic world. Yet, the unique character of modern science began to take shape only in Europe of the early modern period, at the same time, in the same places as the imperial expansion of Spain, Portugal, Britain, France, the Netherlands, and Russia. During the early modern period, true, Chinese and Muslims and Native Americans and Polynesians continued to make important contributions to science. It wasn't just the Europeans. Uh, economists, European economists, like Adam Smith and Karl Marx, they studied the books of Muslim economists. Uh, Native Americans' treatments of diseases influenced European doctors and data gained from Polynesian informants in the Pacific, revolutionized Western anthropology and zoology and biology. But until the 20th century, the people who brought together all these different data and discoveries and, and uh, ex experiments, and in so doing, created the scientific disciplines and theories were the ruling, in, uh, the ruling elites of the global European empires. China and India and the Islamic world, they produced people as intelligent, as, as curious as those of Europe. However, between the 16th century and the middle of the 20th century, uh, non-European civilizations did not produce anything that comes even close to Newtonian physics or to Darwinian bi biology in terms of scientific theories that explain uh, how the world works. This does not mean, of course, that Europeans have some unique gene for doing science or that Europeans will forever dominate the study of physics and biology. Just as Islam began as an Arab monopoly but was subsequently taken over by non-Arab people like the Turks and the Persians, so modern science began as a European enterprise, as a European speciality, but it is today turning into a global multi-ethnic enterprise, and you can find Indians and Muslims and Chinese alongside Europeans and people from European origins in the forefront of science. What exactly forged the historical bond between modern science and uh, European imperialism? What forged this bond was that both the scientists and the conquerors of early modern Europe shared the same basic mindset, the same basic view of the world. They both began by admitting ignorance. Both conquerors and scientists began by saying, I don't know what's out there in the world. They both then felt compelled to go out into the world and make new discoveries. And they both hoped, the scientists and the conquerors, that new knowledge that will, they will acquire would, they, would make them masters of the world. We see this connection between uh, scientific research and imperial conquest most clearly in the great European voyages of exploration of the early modern period. These voyages were one at one and the same time, both scientific voyages of exploration and imperial voyages of conquest. European imperialism was in this way uh, very unique, very different from all previous imperial projects in history. 
previous conquerors assumed that they already understand the world perfectly. Conquest merely utilized and spread their view of the world. For example, when the Arabs conquered Egypt and Spain and India, they didn't do it in order to discover something that they don't know. When the Mongols and Aztecs conquered numerous countries in Asia and in America, and numerous people, what was they were looking for is power and wealth. They were not looking for knowledge. In contrast, European conquerors, European imperialists in the modern age, they set out to distant lands in, in the hope of uh, not only conquering them, but in the hope of obtaining new knowledge. And the process of obtaining new knowledge was intertwined with the process of conquering the new lands. Already in the 15th century, Portuguese voyagers explored the coasts of Africa and simultaneously seized control of all kinds of islands and harbors along the coast. Christopher Columbus went on a voyage to gain new geographical knowledge and he discovered America, but immediately also claimed sovereignty, claimed control over the lands that he discovered. Ferdinand Magellan was the first person who managed to find a way around the world to circumnavigate the whole globe. But simultaneously with his geographical explorations, he also laid the foundations for the Spanish conquest of the Philippines and many other territories. As time went by, the conquest of knowledge and the conquest of territory became ever more tightly connected. In the 18th and 19th century, almost every important military expedition that left from Europe to distant lands had on board scientists who set out not to fight, but to make scientific discoveries. And also, almost every important scientific expedition that left Europe to some distant land also had political ambitions of conquest. The most famous example of this is the expedition of James Cook to the South Pacific Ocean in Australia in 1778. The Cook expedition included a team of about 10 scientists from various disciplines, headed by the famous astronomer Charles Green and by the botanist Joseph Banks. In three years, uh, this expedition made numerous scientific discoveries and collected immense amount of new empirical observations on geography, astronomy, botany, zoology, anthropology, medicine, and, and so forth. The Cook expedition brought back to Europe the first detailed accounts of Australia, New Zealand, and many of the Pacific Islands. Its findings made major contributions to a number of scientific disciplines, and it sparked the imagination of generations of European scientists with astonishing tales about the South Pacific and the cultures that uh, uh, they found there. Perhaps most famously, the expedition also helped to find a cure to the disease of scurvy, a disease that cost the lives of millions of people in the early modern period. However, this scientific expedition of James Cook had another side to it. James Cook was not only a geographer, he was also a naval officer in the British Royal Navy. The ship in which the expedition sailed was provided by the British Royal Navy, which also provided 85 well-armed sailors and marines and equipped them with artillery and muskets and gunpowder and all kinds of other weapons. Much of the information which the expedition collected was, uh, had obvious political and military usages. Most importantly, Cook claimed sovereignty for Britain of many of the islands and lands that he discovered, most notably Australia. When Cook reached Australia, 
he not only explodes the land, he also said, this is ours. This belongs to Britain now. And in, and in this, he laid the foundation for the British occupation, conquest of Australia and New Zealand and the South Pacific, and the foundations for the settlement of millions of Europeans in the new colonies. And this led, of course, also to the extermination of the native cultures of Australia and New Zealand and much of the uh, Pacific Islands. In the hundred years that followed the Cook expedition, the most fertile lands of Australia and New Zealand were taken from the uh, previous inhabitants by European settlers. The native population of Maoris in New Zealand and Aboriginal Australians in Australia dropped by more than 90% and the survivors were subjected to a very harsh regime of racial oppression. For the Aboriginal uh, Australians and for the Maoris of New Zealand, the Cook expedition was not just a scientific expedition, it was also the beginning of a catastrophe from which they never managed to recover even to this day. So how should we understand the Cook expedition? Was it a scientific expedition which was protected by a military force? Or was it a military expedition which a few scientists joined in order to, to, to look around? Uh, there is no simple answer to these questions. It's like asking whether your gas tank is half empty or half full. It's both. The scientific revolution and modern imperialism were simply inseparable. For people like Captain James Cook and the botanist Joseph Banks who headed this expedition, science and empire were basically the same thing, the same project. To give just one more of, out of numerous examples of, of how this worked, considered another very famous expedition, the expedition of the ship Beagle. The, the ship Beagle also belonged to the British Royal Navy, and it was sent in 1831 to map the coasts of South America, the Falkland Islands and the Galapagos Island in expectation of, uh, of, of war in these areas. The British Navy needed this knowledge to prepare in the case of war in the area of South America. Now the captain of the Beagle, he was not only a, 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 an officer in the Navy, he was also an amateur scientist. And he decided to take along on the ship a geologist in, because he was interested in studying the geological formations that the expedition might encounter on its way. It was a good opportunity. You send a ship to the other side of the world, so why not make some scientific uh, uh, explorations as well? He, uh, the captain approached several professional geologists, but they all refused the invitation, and he finally offered the chance to a 22 years old Cambridge graduate by the name of Charles Darwin. Darwin studied in Cambridge to become an Anglican past, uh, pastor, Parson, but uh, during his studies he discovered that he was far more interested in geology and the natural sciences than in the Bible. So when this uh, captain offered him to come along for this uh, expedition to South America, Darwin jumped on the opportunity and as everybody knows, the rest is history. The, while the captain of the Beagle was spending his time drawing military maps of South America, Darwin was busy collecting empirical data about geology and botany and zoology, which uh, was the basis of his insights, which became later on the theory of evolution. So even this, the most important uh, of uh, the scientific theories of the modern age maybe, it had its origin in a military expedition. I want to give just one more example after all, uh, concerning uh, the journey to the moon in 1969. <clears throat> there was a story, I'm not sure it's true, but it's a very good story, so I, I'll tell it anyway. A story about the expedition of the American astronauts in 1969 to the moon. 
as everybody probably know, on July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed the first two men to land on the, first, on the surface of the moon. But in the months leading to the expedition to the moon, the astronauts trained in a remote moon-like desert in the western United States to simulate the conditions of the moon. This area in the desert of the western United States was home to some Native American tribe. And uh, there is a story, again, I'm not sure if it's true, which describes the encounter between the astronauts and uh, one of the, of the tribe's people. One day, as the astronauts were training, they came across uh, an old man, an old Native American. And they asked them, what are you doing here? And they told him that they were training because they are part of an expedition, a scientific expedition, which will shortly travel to explore the moon. When the old Indian, when the old Native American heard that, he, he was silent for a few minutes. And then he asked the astronauts very seriously if they could perhaps do a favor for him. What do you want? Uh, the astronauts asked him. Well, explained the old man, the people of my tribe, they believe that on the moon there live all kinds of holy spirits. And I was wondering if I could use this opportunity that you're going to the moon to pass an important message from my people uh, to the Holy Spirit on the moon. And the astronauts agreed. So the man said something in his tribal language and asked the astronauts to repeat it again and again and again until they memorized it perfectly. And the old man was, was very happy about it. And then the astronauts asked, okay, now that we know the message, please tell us, what does it mean? What does it say? Oh, said the old man, I can't tell you. It's a secret that only our tribe and the sacred spirits on the moon, only, only they are allowed to know the message. So what to do? The astronauts went back to the base, but they were very curious. They were scientists after all. So they searched and searched until they finally found somebody who could speak this uh, tribal language. And they asked him, to translate what the secret message means. And they repeated the message that they memorized, and then the translator started to laugh and laugh and laugh. And when he finally calmed down, the astronauts asked him, well, tell us, what does this message mean? So the man, ex so the man explained that the message says, uh, dear sacred spirits of the moon, don't believe a single word these white people are telling you. No matter what they say about science or anything, the real reason they came, they come to steal your lands. So don't believe them. This was the secret message of this uh, old Native American about the scientific expedition to the moon. And this message was learned by people all over the world in the previous centuries that yes, the Europeans may come with all kinds of ideas about science and exploration and so forth, but on the way, they are also coming to steal your lands. We can say then that in the modern era, European scientists and European conquerors both had the same mentality a mentality of exploring and conquering. They all the time wanted to explore new territories and simultaneously to conquer them. How this mentality developed and how it affected the world in the, in the modern era will be discussed at greater length in the following, se in the following segment of the lesson.